Good morning, Mr. Speaker, and thank you. Good morning, colleagues. It's my distinct pleasure to introduce not only a pastor of mine, but a great friend. Ricky Shepard was born and raised in Griffin, Georgia. Go Bears, right? <laughs> and in light of what we heard yesterday with the Mental Health Parity Act, it's so fitting to have Pastor Shepard here today. As a young teenager, young adult, Ricky became an alcoholic and battled it for many years until the age of 28 when he gave his life to Christ and began a new life that didn't involve alcohol. The past 18 years, Ricky has been involved in a full-time ministry and spends his days encouraging and helping people who are battling with addictions or just in need of help. Ricky has served in, on multiple school boards, including Monroe Academy and Rock Springs Christian Academy. He currently is, does leadership training for local churches and businesses, as well as motivational speaking. Ricky is currently serving as executive pastor of Christ Chapel Community Church in Zebulon, Georgia, and is the vice chairman for the Pike County Chamber of Commerce. Representative Camp. <laughs> Ricky is proud to be the son of Harold and Phyllis Shepherd of Griffin, Georgia, and his dad, Harold, is 96 years old, a World War II veteran, and still drives, but he's asking us to be real careful around breakfast and dinner on any given day. He has one teenage daughter, Riley, who is currently a ninth grade online um, Liberty University student. And his favorite saying is, love people where they are and don't leave them where you found them. Pastor Ricky. Thank you, Speaker Rosslyn and Representative Mathiak for, uh, for me being here today. I'm, I'm honored to be here today. It is uh, an honor to come and to, to speak with you. I, I first of all, I want to say thank you to all of you for your service to our great state. Um, it's a uh, years ago I was actually approached I love politics <clears throat> and years ago I was actually approached by some people to want me to run for for office and I told them I said you know I said there's enough true stuff about me that I don't want my daughter to know let alone have folks make stuff up about me so I I kindly uh, I kindly passed but I appreciated the offer I want to talk to you today about just having a great day it's gonna be a great day I got out of bed at 6 o'clock this morning, my feet hit the floor, headed to the gym, and I said, it's going to be a great day. The scripture says in Psalms 18:24, it says, today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I believe there's four things that we can do today and every day to ensure that we're going to have a great day. The first thing we can do is just look. Start each day looking for the good in people. It seems that we live in a day now where we're so busy trying to find things in people or things in, in circumstances that, that divide us rather than unite us. I, I was raised, in, in, with my parents, they taught us that if you go looking for trouble, you'll find it. I, I believe the opposite is true as well. If you'll go looking for good, you'll find it. Take time each day just to get up and just look. Look for the good in people, even in the worst of us. There's always something good that can be found in us. So not only should we look, the second thing is just listen. Helen Keller once said that the only thing worse than not having sight is to have sight with no vision. And to put a different spin on that, I'd say the only thing worse than having ears to hear is to listen without hearing. See, one thing that I know for sure is that everyone just wants someone to listen to them. It, it reminds me of a story of an, of an elderly man in the nursing home, and it was his birthday, and the nurse come in to check on him, and, and she said, happy birthday, and he jumped up out of bed. He said, can you guess how old I am? And she looked at him. She said, unbutton your shirt. So he unbuttoned his shirt, and she just kept looking. She said, take your shirt off. So he took his shirt off, and he kept looking, and she said, take your T-shirt off. So he took his T-shirt off, and then she looked at him again. She said, flex your mu muscles. He sat there, and he flexed. She said, you're 88 years old. He said, how did you know that? She said, you told me yesterday. <laughs> we need to listen. Larry King, the late CNN anchor, 
He once said, I've never learned anything while I was talking. We all need to listen. One thing I know for sure, it doesn't matter what race, it doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, Republican, Democrat, Independent, doesn't matter if you was born on the right side of the tracks or the wrong side of the tracks. We're all the same in this sense. We all want to know that someone is listening. If we've passed a good bill or, or we had a good day or we've had a bad day, we just want to know that someone is listening. See, one thing I know about people, people don't know, how, they, don't, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People just want someone to listen to them. So wake up every day and look. Wake up every day and listen. Wake up every day and learn. Just learn. See, it's amazing how much we can learn if we'll just listen and if we'll just look. Every day that God blesses us with is another opportunity for us to learn from something. One thing I've learned in my 18 years of being in full-time ministry is that even in the roughest criticism, in the roughest critics that I've had in my life, I've always found some little small nugget of truth or some little small nugget of something that I can learn from, even in the worst criticisms that I've had. Sometimes lack of humility keeps us from learning. It, you know, after all, it's kind of hard to learn something when you know everything, right? How many of you know somebody that knows everything? How many of you is that person sitting to the left or right? No, don't raise your hand on that. Don't do that. Lack of humility keeps us from learning. Fear will keep us from learning. The fear of failure, the fear of making a mistake will keep us from learning. But you know one thing, I would rather, I would rather try and fail versus failing to try. It's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to fail. We learn from our mistakes. We learn from our failures. It's wise to learn from our mistakes, but it's wiser, if that's a word, to learn from the mistakes of others. So we need to look. We need to listen. We need to learn. And the last thing we need to do is we just need to laugh. We just need to laugh. Proverbs 17, 22 says this. It says, laughter does the heart good like a medicine. I, I was raised with four brothers. There's five of us boys and all. And as we've already heard, my dad's 96 years old, World War II veteran. Uh, I would highly advise you to stay off the streets of Griffin. He drives every day during breakfast time and dinner time. Just, just stay away from there. But I was raised... My mom used to teach us and, and taught us that through the Lord and laughter, you can get through anything. With the Lord and laughter, you can get through anything. This past year and a half for us has been the toughest year and a half that I've ever walked in my 51 years on this earth. My mom is in the last stages of dementia. And it's not real funny when you walk in her room and she don't even recognize you. It's kind of hard to smile when you're singing songs with her and and, and she don't even, my mom was a singer. She traveled all over the country singing gospel songs, southern gospel. And when you sing some of the old songs of the church and she can't even find the right note. It's kind of hard to smile during those times. But one thing that I've noticed is that even though she may not even realize what she's doing, even now she's finding ways to make us laugh. A great example of that is about three or four weeks ago, I got a phone call from her nurse. And she said, she said, Mr. Shepherd, she said, I just want to kind of update, update you with your mom. She said she was having a bad day today. And uh, I went to her room to try to calm her down. She was real emotional. And she said, Miss Shepherd, she said, what's wrong? Now, keep in mind, my dad's 96 years old. She said, well, she said, I'd be okay if that husband of mine would learn to just keep his britches on. They've been married 56 years. He's 96 years. I mean, the first thing I want to do is find my dad and give him a fist pump. I'm like, you go, dad, 96 years old. You just have to laugh. It's okay to laugh. There's something that we can find humor in, in everything. And in closing, everything that I've told you today, you may think, well, wait a minute. This has nothing to do with me. You said, what can I do for me to have a good day? Everything that you've said is something that I do for others. That's exactly right. You're servants. I'm a servant. When we accepted that role, it didn't become about me anymore. It became about them. Zig Ziglar, great speaker, he said this. He said, it was amazing that the day that I set out to live every day making other people's dreams come true. He said, it was amazing that all of my dreams became true. 
So today, if you want to have a great day, learn to look, listen, learn, laugh, and do everything you can to make other people's dreams come true. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you today thankful for you this day, that the day that you have made. I thank you for each man and woman sitting in this room, and I thank you for their service to our great state. And God, I ask you today to give wisdom and direction to each one of them as they govern this state and communities. I ask you, God, to protect our families, our children, and our grandchildren as we travel so many unknowns in this day that, in this day-to-day -day walk. And God, I ask you to forgive us where we fail you. And God, to heal our land and heal our great nation and, and our great and beautiful state. Thank you for all that you do, all that you have done, and for all that you're going to do. I pray this prayer today, Lord, respecting all faiths. But today I pray this prayer in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, the name above all names. Amen.